Välkommen. Åh, oh, vet ni vad? Nu kribblar det lite i magen, må jag se. Si. För det är er så gøy att det har valt att spendera denna aften här för att ta del av detta experiment här. Den ni nu ska få höra, det är er Ethel Smythes opera The Boat Swain's Mate. Ethel Smythe, hon var en powerhouse av en dame. Hon var suffragett. Hon levde som den första öppent lesbiska komponisten. Och när The Boat Swain's Mate hade premiär i 1914, så var den en publikumsuccé. Det här är, er, så vitt vi vet, kun den tredje gången någon sinne som denna operan sätts upp. Så här är det det här helt ut som en opera ifrån 1914. <laughs> och det är er för att Jonas Röjeng och jag, Lotta Karlsson, <laughs> sammen har adapterat den här operan till ett helt elektroniskt lydlandskap. Tusen tack. <laughs> och <laughs> för ett bra publikum. <laughs> Och vad sker när detta möter live opera? Med oss har vi dessa fyra fantastiska sångarna. Therese Angel Katschik. Hey. Ivar Magnus Sandve. Magnus Storholt Kjeldal. Och Johan Dornvalt. <laughs> Therese spelar Mrs. Waters. Hur Ja, nej, hur har inget förnamn hon. Men hur driver vårt värtshus, alltså The Boat Swings Mate? Och det gör hon alldeles alena för det är sen en stund tillbaka så är er mannen hennes död och hur är er enke. Och jag läser från karaktärsbeskrivelsen. En i övermåte attraktiv eh, personlighet med tydlig humoristisk sans. 28 till 30 år gammal. Husk på den aldern förresten i någon av arierna ni ska höra senare. Så har vi Ivar Magnus som spelar Harry Ben. En liten man, tidigare yrke, sjöman. På fel sida av 40 åren. Ned Travers av Magnus Dorholt Kjeldal. En höjman. En soldats framtoning, men eh, åpenbart på luffen. Sorglös och omgänglig. Cirka 35 år gammal. Och så har vi Johan Dornvald som politi. Han är er alltså landsens politiman. Tåpelig, selvhöjtidlig. Vilken som helst alder. Marianne, det är er Mrs. Waters hjälpande hand i verkshuset. Tusen tack. Okej, okay, så låt mig bara sätta stämningen. Det är er en liten landsby någonstans i England. Det är er en varm sommarkväll utanför verkshuset The Boat Swings Mate. Under någon träd står ett par rustika bänkar. På en av dessa disse sitter Harry Bent med ett krus öl föran sig. En bit ifrån ham står Marianne och väntar tålmodig.
gonna blow that roughest of pillow. So, you're gonna spend the night with your old mother, are you? Well, I dare say the old lady would be happy to see you. She ain't so very old. Lisa is waking up a beautiful dog, not if she was a man. What sort of age? Here's your wages, Marianne, and be back in good time tomorrow, mind. Good night. As I was saying, when a girl called me, I know what I want when I see it. my courage up. Next time, I'll do it before I had a drop. That will prove to you that I'm earnest. It don't matter whether you're in earnest or whether you aren't. I'm not. You're not? You mean in refusing me? <laughs> I never in all my life met anyone to equal your conceit. Bless me. <laughs> I've got to run down to the village for a money order. And the shop will close in 10 minutes. Now, if there's one situation which I can be myself trusted to do some justice, it's a stroll across the meadows with a lady. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, if any customers come by while I'm gone, perhaps you'll serve them. Mrs. Waters? Mrs. Waters, um, um, I was going to say, uh, you can't have been of your present mind always. Not since the late lamented asked you the question. Once bitten, twice shy. I'll be back directly.
little boy Blossoming hopes may droop and perish. A gentle voice on the breeze I hear, and it says to me, Without a husband to love, obey, and cherish, the woman's just like I be without a tree. Stomping about and swearing will do it. I'm sure you will win in the end. <laughs> Hello? Anyone in? That's queer. I can give you anything you like to call for. Oh, the landlord, by Jove. <clears throat> Good evening, sir. Two four rail, if you please, and uh, out here, if it's the same to you. Right you are. Four pence old old. Well, there goes half my capital. Well, a drink's a drink anyway. The very man I've been looking for, I do believe. Army hero, ain't you? Uh, well, was. <laughs> now I'm my own commander in chief. <laughs> um, very nice place of yours, this. It is yours, ain't it? Uh, well, uh, not exactly. Not yet. It belongs to a lady who left me in charge. She went down to the village, and me, a great friend. A lady what you got your eye on, so to speak. <laughs> well, you're in the right. It's, um, it's a very nice place, this. No, uh, no quiet. Um, any openings in these parts for a handy fellow who has no objection to work uh, within reason? I can't think of anything at this moment, but if you're in no hurry, call in here by tomorrow. You might find there's a job going. All right. I ain't master here yet, but my word goes for something, and I always liked the soldier. Always did. Cheers. <laughs> well, here's to her. Good health. And um, when's it coming off? Uh, that's the trouble. <laughs> Won't name the day? Worse than <laughs> that. <laughs> she hasn't refused you, has she? Five times in the last fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> well, stick to it, mate. You'll wear her down yet. That's what I count on. I laid back a good bit of money, too, when I was at sea. But she doesn't seem to care about that. You don't say so. I keep on telling her. She's a lone widow, and the boatswain, a lonely place. 
You need a man to protect her, I say. But she only laughs. Then again, I'm a small man. Small, but stiff. <laughs> and she likes tall men. Well, most of them do. <laughs> That reminds me, actually, uh, one day at Ramsgate, when I was in the army. Huh? <laughs> Lord, shall I ever forget you. You're quite done with them interesting reminiscences, old chap. I was going to say, I do believe I can put you in the way of a job myself. A job that will suit a man of your cut down to the ground. How would you like to earn a quid in ten minutes? Well, how would a dog fancy a sheep's head? Huh. <laughs> what type of job is it? Wait a minute. Never been in trouble, have you? What the devil do you mean? Ah, oh, don't go off flying like me like that, mate. I had my reasons for that remark. Damn you and your reasons. Meaning for you, when I say to you, when I offer you the thing that is burgling, it is necessary for me to be certain of your honesty. What? <clears throat> burgling? Honesty? Meaning for what, you? Are you drunk or am I? To pretend to be a burglar. Ah, we're both drunk, that's what it is. Uh, it's an idea that's been in my head for ever so long, but I needed a right man to help carry it out. The plan is, kill two birds with one stone. Prove to her that she does want to be protected and that I'm the best man to do it. Feel that? Wow, like a lump of wood. <laughs> You'll see how she'll go out and leave me to guard the place. The opinion is that she loves me without knowing it. Well, they often do. <laughs> <laughs> if you do what I want you to do tonight, and it comes off all right, damn, I'll make it two quid. Oh, go on, Vanderbilt. I'm listening. Well, meet me here at about two o'clock, and I put you through a window that I know of. You go upstairs, and alarms her. She screams for help. I'm watching the house, faithful like. Here's the scream. I dash in, knock you down, and rescue her. Do you see? I hear. 
she clings to me in her gratitude, proud of my strength and pluck, marries me. <laughs> That's the plan, is it? And a fine plan it is to What about the neighbors? Are they deaf or crippled or what? For some house and start to scream like that. It like does not a soul in half a way to hear. I'm hanged if I do. Accidents may happen, and where should I be then? I don't agree. You might, but then again, you mightn't. But I made a three quid. I've taken a fancy to you. You're just the man for the job. I need, I need. With my name and address, ask your eye over them. Well, if you give it me in writing, then should there be an accident is worse for me than for you? That's so. And it all turns out well as it will do. You have done a Christian lesson. You ain't faint at it, are you? Why, I say you will take all your like job like that Just for the fun of the thing Just for the fun of the thing A bullseye Go on, mate A bullseye Fine, you man You write as follows This is to give notice that I Harry Penn, I Harry Penn, being of sound mind and body, sound mind and body, have told Ned Travers to pretend to be a burglar, pretend to be a burglar. And I shall be a sight all the time, all the time. It's all about board and ship shape, ship shape. Signed, Harry Ben. Hi, Harry Ben.
at 3.30 sharp, I will be here. Righto. And between pals, has half a crown to go on with. Thank you. Thank you. Ace is coming already. Oh, go out, go, I'm, go. I'm off, I'm off. I'm off. Well, Mr. Ben. Done any business? Uh, one uh, guy that came in, one poor fellow, a tramp on the lookout for a job. Mm -hmm. I told him to pop on by by tomorrow and he will have my good word. Mm, very obliging of you, I'm sure. Well, good night. Uh, four mugs we had in all, and uh, here's the money. Thank you. Good, good night. It goes to my heart to leave you all alone like this. The night falling fast. Oh, dear. Let's not have all that all over again. <laughs> the best of friends must part. <laughs> What's more, I can't have you hanging about here all day. I've got my good name to think of. All the more as I'm not likely to change it. <laughs> so good night. Pussy, pussy, pussy. Puss, puss, puss. Wherever can that cat have got to? The more you call her, the less she comes. <laughs> well, I can't blame her. <laughs> For I'm rather that way myself. <laughs>
Kära publikum, här är det dags för en liten paus. Gå och köp nu och dricka och så ses vi om tio minuter ett kvarter för 
Akt 2. Välkommen tillbaka. Hoppas det har fått något gott att dricka och är redo för andra akt. Natten har nog sänkt så över landsbyen vår. Månelyset kastar långa skyggor över the boat swings mate och tystnaden ligger som ett teppe över byggningarna. Det enaste man ser och hör är någon katter som stryker längs med husväggarna. Eller? Vad är det för skyggor som beveger sig under träden? Don't wake her. She must be a sound sleeper. All quiet. And he, and he doesn't. Here's the money. Oh, the old deal. Has he found for me? Got a gun. Keep still, keep still. 
it's all right. I can train. I'll not move. You better not mind that a gun and this pointing straight at you. Point it downwards, Miss Whitworth, and take your pretty little fingers off the trigger. Don't you try to recall. I'm going to fire one barrel out of the window. It is you. I've got the I'm not a burger, it's all a joke. I'm doing it for a friend of yours named Harry Burn. What's that? It's true as here I stand. My instructions will be them. And if you step up to the window, you'll see him in the garden. Protect you from a burglar. You needn't say more. I quite understand. You ought to be punished. But there you are. I am being punished. I'm getting the cramp in here pretty bad. Pretty bad. I can't 
lesson of his life. I'm going to fire off this gun and tell him I've killed you. <laughs>
Miss that not to be made a field marshal. <laughs>
against you. Well, then, of course, I shan't say anything at all. <laughs> like a house, I met this man here, all white and trembling, and his hair Oh, 
Seven wonders of the world, or are there eight of them? Anyways, you beat the whole lot. Thank you, Pointy. <laughs> but when the coast is clear, you go, Mr. Ned Trap. Isn't there any little job I could do for you while I'm waiting? Just make a Why don't you get some regular work? Easy. 